Kovo from Fitting Fitness In. I'm a personal trainer and nutrition specialist and welcome to Get Healthy with Holly. Today we're going to start out with a workout on a chair. A lot of times people may be injured, you may have a hurt foot or an ankle and you can't stand up for any length of time, you may have a balance issue, you may have a back issue, you may be a senior citizen that needs to be working out in a chair. You can do a great workout in the chair, one that's very, um, one that's very hard and gives you the best workout that you can get. So we're going to start with cardio in the chair because you have to warm up. And so you can start with marching in place, swinging your hands to get your heart rate, heart rate going and your blood flowing. Now, if you have a foot issue and you can't do the feet, then just do the arms. You can swing. Or you can punch, punch up, up, side, side, down, down, punch up, up, side, side, down, down. You'd be surprised how much this can get your heart rate up and going. As a matter of fact, if you've ever played Nintendo Wii and you've done a sports edition that has the boxing, that really gives you a great cardio workout. So just keep moving and punching and going and going. We're just gonna do this for a minute to warm up. Ow, just don't wanna hit your elbow like I just did. <laughs> All right, so now we're warmed up. So we're gonna start with, um, if you're able to stand up, and uh, we're gonna start with some squat taps. So I'm gonna start standing. And you're just going to come down, tap the chair, and then stand back up. Little taps. As you go down, bring those hands forward to help counterbalance. Make sure those knees stay behind your toes. And we're going to do about 10 or 12 of these. Now, one thing I do with my clients, my senior fitness, is I do, um, we sing My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to say, um, Excuse my voice, I'm not a big singer, but this is what we do. And, and by singing while we do it, people totally forget what, um, what they're doing and they forget that they're doing at least, let's see, 10 to 12 squats in this, my Bonnie lies over the ocean. So let's start. So you start sitting down, no hands, either you can put your hands here or you can put your hands here, depending on what works best for you. I'm gonna go down here so I don't hit my microphone. And we stand up for every phrase. So, my bonnie lies over the ocean. My bonnie lies over the sea. My bonnie lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my bonnie to me and then you can sit down. So that did, I think it was 12 squats, but you probably didn't notice it because you were singing and engaged in it. So that's one thing you can do. However, if you can't stand because of knee issue or back issue, we can work your legs out in the chair just as easily. So I want you to sit tall, shoulders up, back and down. Good posture is very important. And hands are on the chair. You're gonna lift one leg up, extend it out, bring it back in and down. Switch to the other, up, out, in, and down. Switch up, out, in, down. Switch up, out, in. That's two, bring it up, out, in, down, up, out, in. That's three, make sure you bring it out as far as you can. Back in and down, up, extend it out, in, that's three, that's four. Up, out, in, down, up, out, in, that's five. 
up, out, in, down, up, out, and that's six, up, out, in, down. Do this with me, up, out, in, seven, up, out, in, down, up, out, in, eight, up, out, in, down, up, out, in, that's nine, up, out, in, down, up, out, and that's 10. So I'm doing 10 today, but at home you want to do 12 to 15 sets. And a set is one on each leg. So um, if you have problems with your knees and extending and bending your knee is a problem, here's another one you can do that works out your quadricep. Keep that leg straight and just lift it and bring it down. Now you're not going high. Lift and down. Lift and down. Three, lift, four, lift five, lift six, lift seven, keep it straight, lift eight. If you have an ottoman, you can put the ottoman in front of you, nine, and one more, ten. And then the other leg, bring it out, extend it, and lift one, two. This is harder than it looks. Three, if you're trying it at home, it's not so easy. Five, lift six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. All right. So that's good for the legs. Now we're going to work on the arms. And for one of these arm exercises, we're going to use our body weight. And it's called tricep dips, which works the tricep, or I like to call it the jiggle zone when you're waving and it's jiggling. You're going to come towards the edge of your chair, put your hands on the chair, palms facing down, and you're going to step out a little bit. Don't go too far. If you go too far, it's too much strain on your, your uh, shoulders. So you want your shoulders as close to your hands as possible. And bring it down and up. Down and up. Yeah, this is hard because you have to lift your body weight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So with the arms, you want to do anywhere from 8 to 12 reps. Start with 8 and then work your way up. The triceps are really hard. It is a good workout. You are going to be sore afterwards. Maybe not that day, maybe a little bit the next day, but most likely more two days later. That's called delayed onset muscle soreness. Okay, next one, we're going to use some weights. These are five pound weights. Just going to do bicep curls. If you don't have weights, you can use soup cans, you can use water bottles. You can use a gallon of milk. A gallon of milk, milk weighs eight pounds. All right, so sitting nice and tall, good posture. Bring those weights up and back down. Bicep curls up and back down. Two, you can even do this while you're watching TV. Three, or on commercial breaks. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Again, eight to 12 reps. I'm doing the lesser one, um, but at home you can do more. Now we're going to work our shoulders with lateral raises. So the weights are here. Your palms are facing each other. Nice, good posture. Bring those weights, bring them up to your shoulder height and back down. Make sure that you take the weights with you too. Don't go like this. No chicken arms. You need to take it with you. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. So that's for the arms. Now we get to the good part, and that's the abs. Okay. So sitting in the chair, put your hands under your legs. And I want you a good, good posture. I want you to lift both legs up. If you can't lift both legs up, lift one at a time. But when you lift both legs, your abs engage, and that's what you're working, OK? What I don't want to see is this, rocking back and forth, OK? I know I'm exaggerating it, but I don't want to see that. I want you to tighten your core. Ready and lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Start with 10 and work your way up to 15. Okay, now come to the edge of your seat. The edge of your seat. We're very excited about this. We're at the edge of our seat. Cross your arms if you can, because you don't want to use your arms. If you need to leave them here, if it, if it bothers your shoulders to have your arms like this, you can put them down on your legs. And slow and control, lean back until you tap the back of the chair and then come forward. Very important that you do slow and controlled movements too, and that you don't just bounce off the back of the chair. Three, because your abs are engaging on the way down and they're engaging on the way up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, good. Okay, next one, the V-sit. Well, this is a little bit more challenging and there is different levels to this V-sit. So you're towards the edge of your chair and you're gonna lift up. Actually, I gotta come a little further so I don't hit the back. You're gonna lift your legs up. Now, this is beginner where you hold on to your legs. Not like this, but like this. And your abs are totally engaged. This is a little bit more advanced, not holding on. The other thing you can do is tap your legs down. Hold on to the chair, keep them up, tap one at a time. That's a nice ab workout. Or you can make it challenging and both at the same time. Again, remember, you don't wanna rock back and forth. Or you can alternate between both legs and single legs and bring it down. It's harder than it looks. I hope you're trying it at home so you can see how difficult it is, but it's a great ab workout. So every workout you have to end with stretching so that we can make sure that you reduce the amount of soreness that you're gonna have. So bring those arms up. So we wanna stretch our abs, nice tall, take a deep breath. Exhale. Again, deep breath. Exhale. And one more nice deep breath and exhale. Good. We're going to do the yoga twist. And by doing that, we're going to sit straight, take a nice deep breath, twist, grab the back of the chair and exhale. Come on back to center, take a nice deep breath, twist to the opposite way, grab the back of the chair and exhale. Come on back, one more deep breath. Twist, grab the back of the chair and exhale. Come on back center, nice deep breath. Twist, grab the back of the chair and exhale. Good. Okay, so we wanna stretch our legs and we're gonna do a hamstring stretch. You can come towards the edge of your seat and one leg out Take those arms up, take a nice deep breath. Exhale, come on down, reach for your toe and grab wherever you can and just hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. And then we want to do the other foot. So usually with stretches, you want to hold them for 10 to 20 seconds or maybe three nice deep breaths. Usually when I'm in class or I'm demonstrating, I go to 12. Arms up, nice deep breath. Exhale, come on down, reach for the toes and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Good. Okay, one more stretch, another one for the hamstrings. And it's a figure four, but it's a sitting figure four. Um, you may not be able to do this, it depends on how, how good your knees are, but if you can bring your leg up over your foot, your knee, and then bring this leg up and pull it in and hold, you're gonna feel that stretch all the way from your hip all the way up through your hamstring to your knee. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Good. 
other side and bring it up. Oh yeah, you feel that. Two, three, four, pull it towards your chest. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, good. Come forward a little bit more. Let's stretch out our chest to open the chest up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And the last one, wrap those arms around. Take a nice deep breath. If you can see my back as I take that deep breath, deep breath, see how it rounds. That gives it a nice stretch. And one more nice deep breath. Great. And then pat yourselves on the back. You did it. So that's your workout in the chair. I'm going to have these exercises listed up on my website under the Get, Hol Get Healthy with Holly show uh, page so you can find these exercises. And now let's take it to the kitchen. Welcome back into the kitchen segment. And today I'm going to make two side dishes that you can make for your Thanksgiving dinner that are healthy and full of nutrients. And we'll start with roasted butternut squash with sage. I'm using sage because when I went to my garden, I had plenty of sage left. So you, I'm deciding on sage, but you could use rosemary. You could use any other spice that you want. So we start with one butternut squash peeled and cubed, about four or five um, leaves of fresh sage, two tablespoons of olive oil, and salt and pepper to taste. And I chose this because it's a very healthy solution for butternut squash. A lot of times you'll get um, at Thanksgiving dinners, people will make that mashed butternut squash with a marshmallow melted topping, which is delicious. And my mother-in-law makes it a great um, butternut squash with marshmallows. But if you're trying to watch your calorie intake, and if you're trying not to gain weight over the holiday season, then this might be a better solution. By the way, did you know that the average person gains 11 pounds from Halloween to New Year's Day? You don't want to be that person. So I'm showing you a couple of nice side dishes that are healthy and light. So let's start with the, uh, let's go with the sage here. So I'm going to take some of these leaves and you can use a knife and chop it. One, two, three, four, there we go. Or I have this handy dandy fresh spice slicer and kind of mashes it up and makes it very easy to work with. Oh boy, that smells good. Nice fresh sage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the squash in here because in order to mix it, I like to kind of shake it up a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna pour the sage in. By the way, I did a little bit of research on sage. And according to ancient herbalists, people who drink sage tea never grow old. So that's a nice little piece of tidbit information. Also, sage, sage belongs to the salvia, um, genus salvia, which means to save, and there's many different varieties around the world. So I'll put this olive oil in. The earliest records of culinary sage occurred in ancient Egypt, where they used it to promote fertility in women. Something to think about in modern day. Also in traditional medicine, sage is used as a drying agent um, cleansing mucus and congestion. If you have a cold, it relieves some night sweats. It also helps with um, a sore throat. So here's a little bit of salt. I don't do too much salt on it. Sage was also believed to ward off evil spirits. Um, actually, I, I realized when I watch, if I watched the Long Island Medium, she burns sages and uh, pushes the the smoke all around to ward off evil spirits. Now, this is what we do. You might get a little workout while we do it. Shake it around, shake it, get your whole body involved, tighten your core, a little workout in the kitchen. Okay, so we have preheated the oven to 400. And we're gonna put this on um, 
I use a sheet pan with parchment paper, and I love to use parchment paper for two reasons. One, it's easy cleanup, and two, if you're using oil on the vegetables or even on a chicken, it will help absorb some of it so your vegetables don't get soggy. So we just want to spread that out so they're all on the sheet as opposed to on top of each other. Here we go. Nice. So this is what it looks like before we put it in the oven. And I'm going to stick it in the oven for about 40, 45 minutes. We'll give it a check. And when you put it on the parchment paper, I find that you don't have to turn it halfway through because um, it doesn't stick. So this is a great solution. Let's put it in the oven. OK, and we're going to set that for 40, 45 minutes, and we'll come back to it. Now we're going to work on some green beans, another great side dish, while we have the butternut squash in the oven. So I'm going to make um, a saute green beans with hazelnuts and a little lemon zest. So why hazelnuts? Well, because usually you use almonds, and I just thought it'd be nice to use something different. And I love hazelnuts. So I'm starting out with um, a pound and a half of green beans. I just boiled these for five minutes to soften them up a little bit, just to kind of save some time. Uh, a third of a cup of hazelnuts, two tablespoons of olive oil, a little salt and pepper to taste, and then we're going to do a teaspoon of lemon zest. So lemon zest, I take this little zester and just get along the skin of the lemon. Oh boy, that smells great. Now when I made this as my tester, my husband Steve gets to be the test tester person. Um, he doesn't like things to taste too lemony. I do. So in the recipe, I just say one teaspoon of lemon zest, but if you like it a little bit lemonier, a little more lemon taste, then you can do one and a half or even two. Okay. Now, at home, you might do this while you're boiling the um, green beans. Put in the hazelnuts. Put in the olive oil. Because we're just going to cook this a little bit to get them toasted. We'll throw in a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. I like the kinds that you can grind because then it's very fresh and the taste is right there. We're going to push this around. Here we go. We'll let it cook a little bit while it's browning. So one of the things that um, I wanted to talk to you about today, since it's November and it's Thanksgiving, and you could gain almost 11 pounds between uh, Halloween and New Year's, you want to maybe watch what you're eating at Thanksgiving. You probably want to re maybe reduce your calories or watch out for the fat. So here's some helpful Holly hints on what you can do to help avoid eating too many calories or too much fat. Um, when it comes to appetizers, stay away from the nuts. I mean, you can have a little nuts, but a portion size of nuts is a quarter cup if it's already shelled. So nuts are very high in fat. They're great, but you want to be careful with them. Go for the veggie tray instead and maybe have a nice um, yogurt dip that you can dip the veggies in. Also, instead of going for the hard liquor, maybe choose a champagne punch or maybe a glass of wine instead of the hard liquor. There's more calories in the hard liquor. Also, when you're drinking alcohol, have a glass of alcohol, a glass of water, a glass of alcohol, a glass of water. It's going to fill you up. You won't eat as much. And it will also help keep you hydrated because, you know, a hangover is just major dehydration. So if you stay hydrated while you're drinking alcohol, uh, it's, it'll reduce your chance of alcohol or re reduce your chance of a hangover. Of course, you know, however much you drink is going to determine that as well. So back to the Thanksgiving dinner, skip the gravy. The gravy's full of fat. Try to go without it. Also, go for the white breast meat as opposed to the dark meat or the skin. The skin has a lot of fat. I know it has a lot of spices too, but it has a lot of fat. So go with the white breast meat. Uh, skip the butternut squash that's topped with a marshmallow, melted marshmallow, and go for something like the roasted butternut squash with sage that we made today. 
and stick with light veggies that aren't creamed or laden with cheeses. Go for something light like what we're making today. And that's why I chose these recipes. The other thing is when you're hosting, you really get to control what the foods are. And even if you're not hosting and you're going to somebody's house, you still get to bring something and you can control what you bring. Some of the things to look out for, I mean, if you have to eat pie, try to eat less of the crust because the crust is where all the calories are. Anything made with white flour is gonna be full of calories. So have that apple pie, but maybe eat more of the filling than the crust. Maybe make a pumpkin mousse instead of a pumpkin pie. Or have some baked apples instead of apple pie, like I made in a previous episode when we did baked apples in the crock pot. Have fruit available for dessert, maybe some berries and cream. You can make some fresh whipped cream with minimal amounts of um, sugar. All right, so we're gonna let this brown a little bit more. All right, good. Starting to brown a little bit. Then you put in your green beans. Oh, now we hear it. And mix it around so they get olive oil and they get some hazelnuts. All right, so we're gonna let that go there. Let's see how much of this is really a teaspoon. There you go. We're gonna go with that. I might have a little bit more. Keep that there and zest a little bit more so that at the end, if we want to put a little more on there as a garnish, we can do that. Okay, well this is looking done. And the buzzer just rang for the butternut squash, so let me grab that. Ooh, look at that. Mm, yeah. Wow. That looks good. Look at that. Ooh, nice. And let's just plate this up. We'll put some butternut squash on this. Ooh, look at that. Boy, these roasted up nice, and they're all caramelized. Again, our goal was to have a nice light side dish, but tasty. So we'll get a little bit of the nuts on here. And then just in case you want a little extra lemon taste, just a little bit more zest. I'd like to thank you for joining me today for this episode of Get Healthy with Holly. You can find these recipes on my website, fittingfitnessin.com, under the Get Healthy with Holly show uh, menu item. You can also get the listing of the exercises that I did in the chair so you can do them at home. I'd like to wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you get to spend it with your family and loved ones. And thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you next time on Get Healthy with Holly.